I love flowcharts. I use them all the time. Hey everyone, this is Johnny Delgado, and I'm here to talk to you about flowcharts, a fantastic tool you can use when organizing your code or any kind of mind mapping you want to do. So flowcharts are a visual way of representing a pathway, an algorithm, some way of moving from step to step that you can clearly see in a visual way. And the most common flowcharts are made up of these symbols. You can see here start and end are represented by ovals and you'll theoretically only see them in you only see them twice in most of your flowcharts. The most common block you'll see is this parallelogram that represents a process. This is just something that you do. And occasionally or pretty frequently, you'll come across these diamonds which represent a choice. Now, this probably doesn't make any sense in isolation, so I'll give you an example here. Uh, I went ahead and made a flowchart, and I began with start, and we connect all the blocks in the flowcharts to each other with an arrow, and uh, I, I went ahead and did a, a basic flowchart for how to teach. So the first process that you do is lecture about a topic, and then you have a choice, which is you ask yourself the question, do my students have questions? Or you ask them. If they do have questions, you go and lecture them some more. If not, then you end. This is a very simple flowchart, and the main thing I want you to know is that uh, the start and end blocks are ovals, uh, parallelograms are the process, and the diamond represents a question. Now, what the heck does this have to do with programming, Johnny? I know you're asking. Well, I have a programming example here that should make things a little bit more clear how you can tie flowcharts into your programming. And I would really recommend using flowcharts to map out the more complex code you're writing. So, uh, we're going to go ahead and make a flowchart that populates an array, every single cell of an array, one by one. And just like before, we begin with start, then we have to, of course, make our array, and then we'll create an index. Uh, that'll represent the location of the cell we're going to look at in this moment, and we'll set that to zero. And you're probably noticing here that you can combine multiple lines of code into one thing. That's absolutely true. Uh, then, once you have your index, the next process is setting the cell value of the array at that index to whatever number you want. And then, we go into this final part where we ask, is this the last index of the array cell? And initially, it's probably not going to be if there's more than one cell in your array. And if that's the case, increase the index by one. This should be, uh, uh, this process down here is the answer for no, and this one up here is the answer for yes. So we go from index zero for our first cell, increase it by one, so now we have one, and then you go back up here, set that array, set cell one. Then you check again, is index one, the very last uh, cell in the array? No, still no. Then we repeat. We set that, uh, uh, we, we increase the index again and we set it. And you can see here, these three blocks, they, they cycle between each other. And you're probably thinking, hey, this lo looks a lot like a, like a loop. You're absolutely right. This can be represented in a for loop. And if you don't believe me, I actually have sample code in the, in the description that is this same flowchart in Java code format. But flowcharts are not Java specific. That's why I love them. They're language agnostic. You can use them for whatever kind of planning of your program that you need. And I highly, highly recommend it for the more complex code. So give it a try, make your own flowcharts. And uh, if you're like me, hopefully it'll help you organize your thoughts. Thanks so much for watching this video. I'll see you in the next one.